Good morning, behind me is Bankfoot Station. Yes, we're out in Newcastle to finally do secrets of the Tynan Ware Metro. The Tynan Ware Metro is a rapid transit light rail system that serves Newcastle upon Tyne, Gateshead, North and South Tyneside and Sunderland. The network is a mixture of new track and stations using old British rail alignments to create the network that we know today. The first section opened in August 1980 between Haymarket around to Tynemouth. In May of the next year, the branch out to Bank Foot was opened. It wouldn't get to the airport until later. In November 1981, the network ascended south over the Tyne on a bridge down to Heweth until a year later, in 1982, the line from Tynemouth came back along the north side of the river to Newcastle city centre. The extension out to South Shields opened in March 1984, followed by the extension to the airport in November 1991. The network was incomplete, with the addition of the line down through Sunderland to where it terminates today at South Hilton in March 2002. The configuration of services over the years has meant that there have also been red and blue coloured lines on the official map at some point, but nowadays there are just two lines, the yellow and green. Note also that between Pelaw and Sunderland, the Metro shares the track with and runs alongside National Rail services. Now we've started our morning here at Bank Foot Station, not at the end, which is the airport, Newcastle International Airport was the end of the line, but we started here because this is where the line originally used to terminate before they extended it out to the airport in the 1990s. What we like about this section of track though is that at many of the stations there are several of these open crossings. The lights flash, beep is beep, but there are no barrier gates to actually stop you going across. So the trains go slowly and the cars have to stop. Our next stop was Regent Centre Interchange, where if you go outside you can see the impressive canopy that straddles the entrance, along with the artwork on the wall. It's also got these old disused ticket barriers, which are no longer in use, and we think is the only place left on the system where you can see them. As you depart Regent Centre, look out of the window on the left-hand side to see the Metro Depot, where all the trains are stored and maintained. You'll often see drivers getting off and on at South Gosforth, which is the nearest station to the depot. But our next station, is Ilford Road. Where there's a rather interesting anomaly. You've got the two platforms here facing each other, but if you look at this station, there's no footbridge. There's no way of crossing from one side to the other. The closest I can find on Google Maps is to walk down the road that way for two minutes, then cross over on a road bridge and then come back. There's no footbridge at Ilford Road. Next up, we get out at Jesmond for some abandonment and some culinary treats. Exit left out of the metro station to find the remnants of an old station. So walk through that passageway, come to the black railings, have a peek over and you can see quite clearly down here the old platforms of the former Jesmond station. And also right next to this is a railway themed pub which itself is next to this restaurant where you can dine in an old railway carriage. Oh and back at the entrance to Jesmond Metro the newsagent shop there sells the cheapest cup of tea we've ever seen at any station. For the next part of our trip, we went up over the top of the Yellow Line, which heads towards the coast, where there are many picturesque stations, the first of which is West Monk Seaton. So we've jumped out here at West Monk Seaton. It's a gorgeous old station with many original art deco features. This whole section of the Tynanway Metro is actually splendid. If you want to get out away from the hustle and bustle of Newcastle city centre and come to any part of the metro, come to this section here, round by the coast, by the sea, down to Tynemouth. It's delightful. Delightful might even be an understatement, for if you come to ride the Metro, as you may want to after watching this video, you simply must come to see the stations on this coastal part of the network, which all retain lots of their original features back from a time when they were once part of British Rail. This is the gorgeous Monk Seaton. Old ticket windows. This is the stunning Tymouth, which has abandoned platforms too, and so much space that it hosts a market within the station every weekend. And then there's the utterly charming Whitley Bay. Which has got this bonus feature too. Whitley Bay, it is gorgeous. Come for the seaside, come for the beautiful station, come for the clock tower, or maybe just come for the only place on the metro that has a toilet. I really have to go, back in a sec. Oh, and by the way, a bit like another railway system we know and love, did we mention that you can sit right at the front of the trains? It's like the DLR in London. You can sit in the front seat and drive the train. They get a new train zone. When the new trains come in, this, this will go. Otherwise, this is the prime seat. That prime seat took us to North Shields. 
we made it to North Shields. Come here to get the ferry. If you've got a zone A, B and C ticket, your ticket is also valid to travel on the North Shields, the South Shields ferry. But down here, there's an old abandoned platform, a bit of track and some buffers that aren't in use anymore. Right at the start of the video, we spoke about how there used to be a yellow, green and a red and a blue line when blue line trains used to run. They used to terminate here at this platform, but no more. From this point, trains are now heading west back towards Newcastle, and in between Howden and Hadrian's road stations, trains go across this, the magnificent Willington Dean Viaduct. A great view from above, but also just as impressive if you're standing in the park down below. And that takes us to the next stop, which intriguingly has got two names. And that brings us to Segedunum Station. What's that? We're at Wall's End. That's the Latin for it. Wall's End, literally the end of the wall, because Hadrian's Wall is just over there. The 76 mile long World Heritage UNESCO site starts just over the way. This is the station to come to. And as a tribute to that, a lot of the signs here at the station have been put into Latin. Wall's End Station also has the most number of steps for any station without a lift or escalator. 44 in total. And at Manor's, there's no sign of the National Rail Station of the same name. Notice that on the map of the metro, uh, where there are connections to National Rail Stations, the National Rail symbol appears, uh, but not at Manor's, because there's such a limited service to the National Railway Station at Manor's, it's Newcastle's least used station, that the metro decide not to mark it as a connection on the map. The map is printed on the back of all leaflets that the metro produce and can be picked up at most stations. Well, the other fun thing to do, of course, is to read a copy of The Metro whilst on The Metro. At St James's Park, the football stadium is right outside, and the station has got black and white decor to match. But in the ticket hall area, there's also a football pitch in the tiles with footprints and signatures of former players and managers. Haymarket Station is the deepest on the network, but have you ever noticed how long Platform 2 is, with trains stopping right at the front and never at the back, so don't ever wait there. It's also just one of the nine stations on the metro that are physically underground. So for our next stop, we headed back up to the surface. We've made it to Felling Station. We're south of the Tyne now, we're heading for Sunderland. Interestingly, if you have a ticket which is valid on the metro, it's also valid on national rail services between Sunderland and Newcastle. But over here, there's an old signal box from an old railway. Yes, before British Rail in 1948 was the London and North Eastern Railway in 1923, but before that, in the early 1800s, the signal box was originally part of the Brandling Junction Railway. And our next stop is Pelor. Yes, that's where we are. Uh, just a fun little one. I do have an obsession with bins, mainly like litter bins that sway in the breeze. Here, on the Tynanway Metro, the bins are like hard plastic or metal. And the colours of the Metro are yellow and green. And we couldn't but help notice that here, is it by design or by accident <laughs> that the litter bins, one for regular and one for recycling, are yellow and green? At this point, the yellow litter bin, sorry, I mean the yellow line, heads east and terminates at South Shields, which has now had three stations in its history. The current one was built to form a new interchange with the bus station, but if you look down the line, you can see the platforms of the old one that closed in the summer of 2019. Moving on, and we get to the Stadium of Light station, decked out in the colours of Sunderland of red and white. But actually, we think it's not the nearest station physically located to the Stadium of Light. St Peter's is actually slightly closer. Can you see in the distance by that old iron red footbridge, that's Monk Weirmouth station, that's an old station. You've also then got the Stadium of Light over there. And over here, you have the Weirmouth Bridge, the impressive green structure there. And then here at St Peter's, in this area, is an art installation. There are lights which sadly aren't working today and they change their frequency depending on how strong the wind is blowing. Just imagine this is a cool lit up area with lights. Our next stop was Sunderland where it was time to get the stopwatch out. We're leaving Sunderland station and when we do I'm going to hit start on my stopwatch. Now because the distance between here and Park Lane is the shortest distance between two stations on the network. Sunderland is actually underground in terms of it's had shops built on top of it and national rail trains pass through here too. We're going to time it. I think it takes about two minutes. One minute, seven seconds, shortest distance between two stations. We were heading towards the end of the Green Line and our next stop threw up a statistic which I always like to focus on on any railway network. 
We made it to Pallion, the 59th out of 60, the penultimate stop on our journey today around all the metro stations. And this is actually the least used station on the Tynanware Metro. Just 576 people a day, on average, use this station. It also, weirdly, has the longest ramp on the whole of the network. Don't forget, you can also look out the back of the train for the view of the tracks behind you, which is what we did as we arrived at station number 60. And we made it to the end of the line, South Hilton, which actually has the longest physical metro platform and it terminates here at a single platform. Although over there, you can see where there's a pathway where the railway used to extend further and go all the way to Durham. But that's it. That is your trip. That is your journey, your experience around the Tynaway Metro. And that was Secrets of the Tynaway Metro. Thanks. Bye.